Well, my first guest on the Drummer Nation show is uh, an old pal of mine. His name is John Lawless, a.k.a. Flawless Lawless. Don't go there. Thank you for being my first guest. My pleasure. You and I go way back. Way back. But let's go back to the beginning for you. Okay. Well, first we have a little summary, let's say. Um, you were from Atlanta. I am from Atlanta. You grew up here. You went to school at Georgia State under the great Jack Bell. I did indeed. Who's produced numerous wonderful percussions. Bunch of us out there. Yep. And then professionally, you do everything in town. What do you do? Well, currently, I'm still principal timpanist with the Atlanta Opera. Uh, sub a lot with Atlanta Symphony. Play principal timpani Georgia Symphony. A lot of other stuff around. Uh, Columbus Symphony. And how about the percussion trio? Percussion trio is still active. We are 34 years now playing school shows. Have one tomorrow morning. The Atlanta Percussion Trio? Yep, you played with us. An institution. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, i tell you a little story. The first time I think I met you was on a gig together we did with the Ritz-Carlton Orchestra at a 4th of July concert at Lenox Square. And it was a full-blown chorus, full-blown orchestra. You were playing timpani back, back there, and I was playing drum set. They estimate a quarter of a million people in the audience. It was a crowd. No pressure on TV and everything. But I got to tell you, I looked back there and I saw you, and I didn't even know you, and there was an energy coming from you <laughs> that I said, man, I got to match this cat. <laughs> and, and, then, and then morph that into working with you with the Atlanta Percussion Trio, where we would have an 8 o'clock a.m. start 40 miles away. Both of us had gigs the night before. I'd be up at the crack of dawn, get there at 7, and find you. We're already there. Your stuff is set up, and you're bright-eyed and bush. Hey, man, how you doing? Can I help you set up? Need some help? We're right in here. <laughs> some folks can do mornings. Some folks can't. But, but you do nights, too. I do nights, too. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> well, I mean, drummers are known for their unbridled energy, but you, you set the bar Thanks. that Thanks. I can only aspire to. Beyond that, we have worked together quite a bit mm -hmm. in the Atlanta Percussion Trio. We've done some other things together, big yes. bands and this and that. So thank you. And we, we haven't, we've left out that you are now the president of? Georgia Percussive Art Society chapter. I am. And who'd you beat out for that? I don't know. <laughs> a couple of people. <laughs> I might have run. <laughs> I'm glad you won. The better man got it. Stop. So let's go back and uh, talk about you came up in the high school scene here. I did. Playing drums. Where'd you go? Well, I started playing percussion uh, before then. I was very fortunate. Fulton County back then, I was in an honor band at third grade. Uh, no chance for that these days, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, started yeah. taking private lessons pretty early on from a guy named Tommy McGarity, uh, was a student at Jacksonville State University. I remember Tommy McGarity. Do you really? I worked with him at Six Flags. Bam. In the oh, band yes, you in did. In 73 or 4. Okay. So this is a weird Good connection, guy. but Tommy took me up through a lot of books, and one day in a lesson, I was still quite young, he looked at me and he said, Well, hot shot, that's about as far as I can take you. And I was like, Sir? And he said, nah, You need to get with Jack Bell. And I got cold chills. I thought, are you sure? And how old were you? I don't know, fifth grade maybe. Yeah. And he said, I'm sure. Get on his waiting list if he doesn't have room for you. You need to do that. And there was the turn. Well, that's that's one of them, yeah. And for people who don't know, Jack Bell was the principal percussionist in the Atlanta Symphony for yep. decades. Oh, oh, 39 years? Finally retired and, yep. and has a, a legion of wonderful drummers who came under his tutelage. And percussionists. <laughs> you know the difference between a drummer and a percussionist? Yeah, you're going to tell me. That's a couple hundred bucks a week. <laughs> yeah. Which way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving you a hard time. <laughs> so so uh, Jack had room in about mm, a month. We got the call. And then I studied with him straight through. Um, and into college, uh, decided I was not through learning from him. So didn't even consider anywhere else. I had other offers and decided Georgia State was, was where I needed to go, right? Yeah. Uh, as a result of that move, started subbing with Atlanta Symphony at 17 years of age. So uh, yeah, I, I finished high school a little bit early, uh, not because I was smart, because my birthday fell where it fell, and I entered school when I entered it. Uh, but nonetheless, I was literally in college at 17, and I was uh, one of those guys, too. Oh, were you? College I took the audition 17. for uh, sub for the Atlanta Symphony on a whim because Jack said, you should take the audition. I said, you think so? All these, you think so's? Mm -hmm. And he said, I do. Uh, so in the trap room at Atlanta Symphony Hall, they set up a xylophone, a bass drum, a snare drum, um, various other things, and I played excerpts. And they said, thanks. Uh, a week later, I got a call to play. So it happened immediately. And um, what was that, 1970? You're still a puppy. Eight, and I'm still doing it. So 56 now. I've had a long, 
odd career. But uh, started very young. You must have been young. great at a young age. That's I'm terrific. on 56 of their recordings. I, I counted one day because really? I was curious. Yeah, yeah, pretty fun. Excellent. So, so when did the were you a founding member of the Atlanta Percussion Trio? Indeed. Tell uh, us what that is. Well, Scott Douglas. Another great myself, percussionist. Yeah, yeah, good buddy forever. Mm -hmm. uh, came out of Georgia State as well in Jack Bell Studio. I went to high school with Scott. Yes, you did. That's right. And now Karen Hunt is in our trio. Went to high school with Karen. Uh, she was in from the second year. The first year was a, a gentleman named Steve Hemphill. And he only left the trio after one year because he went down to get his doctorate at Florida State. Now he's mm -hmm. out in Arizona, um, turning the world on its on its ear. But tell us what it is. What do you oh, guys percussion do? percussion trio. So um, initially through young audiences, and they would put groups into schools, educational programs for children. Uh, we beat out other groups uh, to be the percussion group that they took into their domain the first year, which was probably mm -hmm. 82, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just a, a huge story of success. It's it's never one of those gigs, we've both, both had them, where you leave the gig and you think, oh my gosh, I've got to get a bath. I mean, this, yeah. as you know, having done several, uh, percussion trios, when, the, when you hand a kid a tambourine and you see the eyes, uh, it's all magic. Well, like that, that's where I wanted to go with this. So the percussion trio does programs for kids in schools mm -hmm. that are tied into the curriculum that cover instruments from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And part of the thing about Drummer Nation is that every every society in the world has percussion instruments. And if you pick up a drum, a mallet, a stick, whatever it is, you're in the hippest club in the world because you're a drummer. Everyone would think that, of course. So we're, that's what this is all based on. Awesome. And the fact that we've all had some wonderful teachers, but we learn so much from each other, from our peers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the basis of Drummer, uh, drummer Nation. But uh, the percussion trio, you would do pieces from every continent, right? Yeah, interesting uh, in that when we started the trio, we did music that was written. Uh, very quickly we realized nah, that this is not catered to what we do. So we, we compose everything now or improvise everything. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way for a while. We have 11 different shows, uh, some science and math, some world music, some just on steel drums. Uh, many of those you've played. Um, I've played dozens of them, subbing for so you or somebody else. And I custom. always loved them. And the kids love them right. because they're always, especially because they're always interactive segments. That's the big part of our. Uh, so you may you bring hundreds of instruments. You may have fifty kids having a parade or something we, while you go to Brazil. Exactly. One of our shows, the holiday show that we do, we counted what we we used one hundred seventy five volunteers in the course of the show. So that's a big deal. And, Not to mention all the stuff on stage that the trio plays. Right, right, right. And we all jump around and play a little bit of everything. We all have specialties, mm -hmm. uh, but we can all do it all, you know, except for maybe the, the, the keyboard. Uh, Scott Douglas is our keyboard mm -hmm. person, of course. Um, and he's the steel drum guru. We, we both play, Karen and I both play steel, but Scott's mm -hmm. the guy. He's been the Trinidad. I mean, we wouldn't compete, you know, and it's no competition. That's the beauty of it. It's all, we all know our parts. We all speak. Everyone has their forte. and um, That's what Drummer Nation is also about. Yeah. We're, I mean, you and I are pals. We're, we're competitors. But that's how our world works. I don't think you're going to play Timpy in the Opera tomorrow night. I couldn't touch you on Timpy. See? <laughs> I wouldn't try. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I do. We all help one another. We all yeah. catch each other's there, playing. There's we a all... lot of cutthroat musicians in our town, and most of them are not what we do. Right? They're not I drummers, mean, usually. No, no. And, and you know, the harp people are the same way. They're they're good to each other. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a win-win. I know a few I can't harpists. do it, but I know Michael can. Okay, cool. We'll and when Michael. you move to a new town, who do you call? You call drummers. Oh. And you can only be one place on a Saturday right. night, so we all help our friends out. And that's more unique to drummers than maybe anybody else. And at the heart of what we do as a... As, uh, Drummer Nation. So what's going on with the uh, Georgia chapter of PAS? The Georgia chapter of PAS, it's been dormant for years. When I was a kid, you weren't in town when you, you were in town when you were a kid. It mm -hmm. was a big deal. PAS was what we had, right? I wasn't involved then. Okay, it was what we had. Uh, I went to my first, check this out, you don't know this. I went to my first PASIC, 1977, and I went for 14 years in a row. My dad worked for Eastern Airlines so I could fly wherever it was. I'd go for, for uh, just the cost of nothing, mm -hmm. uh, or very little at least. And uh, my first PAS, I'll never forget this, man. I was a kid holding an elevator door. I heard someone say, hold that door. Held the door. You ready? Yeah. Buddy Rich, <laughs> Louis Belson, <laughs> Remo Belly, Ed Shaughnessy. Walk on. Sean C. had his medallion that was bigger than my face, right? Yeah, he's and, got a special story about that. Oh medallion. my God. And, and I, I just thought, I'm going to be on this elevator until these four guys get off and I'm going to listen. 
And I remember what floor, and they told me, and I pushed the button, and I'm still standing there just in total shock. Mm -hmm. And Buddy Rich looked at Remo Belly and says, so, Reem, what are we working on now? What kind of head am I going to have to have? It, they were just talking stuff like you and I would talk right now. And I'm like, he just called Remo Belly Reem. Wow. Regular guys who <laughs> happen to be geniuses. <laughs> oh, my god! And innovators. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But that's what PAS was and is at PASIC. Well, I remember PASIC where uh, uh, Freddie Gruber and Jake Hanna and Jeff Hamilton and John Riley and I think um, Jim Rupp might have been there. We're all hanging in the bar. Absolutely. At 3 in the morning, yep. we have early flights, but Jake Hanna's holding court. Of course. He's telling stories about Bing Crosby. And I mean, who's getting And out? everybody. He played yeah. with everybody. Who's leaving? Who's going? Well, gee, Jake, it's nice, but I got to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep, sleep and wait. I, I get it. I, I can sleep <clears> later, dude. <throat> yeah, I'm listening yeah. to everything yeah. you have to say. Yeah. All right. Well, you're also known for playing a million different instruments very well, so we're going to have you play a few. What are you going to play? I, you know, when we had this discussion about this awesome thing that you're putting together, I thought, you know, there's there's instruments that are in my collection that if I hadn't been at that place on that day, I would not have them. I think that's with all of us, right? You, you, you see something or whatever, there's these little moments in time. So I brought a few things in that maybe most of your listeners and people that watch this have not seen or even heard of. Some, of course, they have. But I've found them in such odd ways. So, you know, maybe a, a, we'll do a drum from Ghana, 100% mm -hmm. um, crystal bowl that I found that was a vase for a plant, uh, a didgeridoo from Australia that's one of a kind, mm -hmm. literally, uh, maybe some spoons from Ireland, cool. stuff like that. Whatever, Whatever you want. Now, you also rip some incredible snare drum, and you play drum set, hey. too. Hey, thanks. Thank you for being guest number one on the show. Very honored. And I uh, hope we share the bandstand again sometime soon. I, I, and, and I don't doubt it's happening. Great success with PAS. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. Yeah.